So we're, we want to take just a few minutes and we've created a slot where we'd like to invite down some folks who responded to my challenge yesterday. I'm so pleased to see that we had several who did and who emailed us screenshots, videos. In one case, I'm gonna have a question because I didn't understand what, what it was and there was no screenshot. But initially, let me ask, I'm getting old. Uh, let me ask, here we go. Daniel Kluss, are you here? Yeah. Come on down. You're the next contestant on The Code is Right. And Charles, we're going to need that hand mic, please. So if you'd like to interview. So tell us about what you put together. And I think we've got a, a bit of a video here as well. OK, so this is just a simple game, Othello. I'm sure everybody's played it. Um, I just used uh, some draw some circles, draw some lines, a little bit of logic. And it looks pretty good now. This was before or after the beers? Oh, yeah, well, long before that. <laughs> okay, excellent. Yeah, I, I finished it up in the middle of the day before we went anywhere, and I just left it alone because I didn't get to bed very early. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, well, thank you very much for doing that. Now, how was your experience? Had you used Cinder before? No, I never used Cinder before. I just downloaded it. It worked really good, and it, it actually was really easy to draw the lines because everything is zero, zero at the top left and the actual window size at the bottom right. So it's all, you know, pixel based instead of transforming and all those kind of things. Great. So it made it really easy. All right. Well, thank you very much. So our next contestant, Marcelo, do we have Marcelo in the room? Come on down. Now, in this case, I did not get a screenshot or a video. And so you'll have to tell us a little bit about what you did. So, was this your first time using Cinder? Uh, this is not done using Cinder. It's used uh, SF oh, SFML. Yeah. I, in fact, I noted that. Uh, so, basically, it's just a tic tac toe game that I did. I did it yesterday night, and it's like 100 lines of code. And uh, it has an important feature. It has like loco co op, which is basically everybody get his turn. It's not, not no big deal. Uh -huh. It's no feature, but that's it. I mean, it's just a simple <laughs> tic No, no, tic -tac you, you, you got to build as a feature. This is really important. And so had you used F SFML before? No, never. So I just, just, just copied over the tutorial and changed it. I mean, what's simple as that? It's what I did for Pac-Man. So, yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. So that's two examples. Ed, do we have Ed in the house? Come on down. So, Ed, you actually built something that I have a video for. And let me turn over to, I believe this is the one. And so here is, yes, here we go. So, so tell us, tell us about this, this horror-themed app. Um, this is my son defending himself from a horde of roaches with his laser eye vision. And so what did you build this in? Uh, I used Cinder, and we uh, it's probably about 150 lines of code, and it was, took me maybe two, two hours, two hours, 15 minutes to do it. Now, I noticed that some of the other folks were done by 2.15, which means they were programming while eating and while other speakers were talking. So obviously, it wasn't challenging enough, and they could multitask. Right. And so this, this took you about how long? And had you used Cinder about, before? About two hours. No, I've never used Cinder before. I had it downloaded. It was, it was more difficult to find the header files than it was to actually put the game together. Great. Yeah. Well, this was very creative. Thank you very much. Next, I have a question. I don't even have your name. Is A. M. Is A. McLaren in the room? Come on down. Come on down. All right, let's give him a hand. Now, as soon as you're down there, as soon as you're down, I know it's the, the room's pretty big. I'm going to ask you your name, and I used Open Frameworks, and tell us a bit about what you built and what your experience was like. Come here, don't be shy. Did you get the uh, video or just this blank page? I did not get a video. Um, if Sorry. you uh, uh, have the internet, just type Aaron McLaren or A. McLaren, and, uh, or you can look at your Twitter feed. So I, I uh, tw tweeted it to you last night when I finished it. Basically, I created a uh, procedurally generated artwork that animates and does this whole uh, Lin and Meyer system uh, 
it looks really cool. Too bad you don't have a screenshot of it. <laughs> well, here's, here's what we're going to do, because I also know from Charles that during Andre's talk, someone else emailed another project. I have a 20-minute talk at the end of the day on my favorite 10 lines of code, which is about a 15-minute talk and a 20-minute segment. So we will have that then. Cool. So we'll correspond. I'll work with you over lunch. Sure. Thank you very much. And that was with Open Frameworks. So next, thank you. Brandon, Brandon Full James, come on down. Yeah, okay, there's good speed going here. And now you used Cinder, and I don't have an animation, but you can tell us a bit about Warhammer. All right, so uh, does anyone play Warhammer here? No one at all. There are a few hands. I'll all right, there's a hand. Hands. All right, don't. Okay, there's there's another one just because I dragged him into it. Uh, <laughs> it's basically just uh, toy soldiers for adults. You run them at each other, you roll a bunch of dice, and. You see what comes out. So I made a basic little simulation saying, if this unit fought this unit, uh, run through the battle, show me who died, show me what happened, and all that. So I used Cinder just to kind of visually represent uh, all the stuff that was going on behind the screen. So how did you use Cinder before? I had never even heard of it before. So you heard about it yesterday? You, could, you found it, downloaded it. Did you start with a tutorial? Uh, I looked at the, the first tutorial, and like you said, it was pretty much harder to find the header files than it was to actually start <laughs> using the thing. Uh, I've tried to use DirectX Raw before uh, when I was younger. Uh, shoot me. So <laughs> this was a very, very, very welcome change. Great. Thank you very much for that experience. Rick. We have a ringer. Come on down, Rick, because Rick, you might r recognize his name because he's the guy that I stole six slides from for my keynote. So in addition to knowing a lot about creative graphics and an art and actually having a very nice Lego versus clay uh, illustration, tell us about what you did here. And in fact, I think I have a video. Let's see if it worked. Is there a voiceover? Uh, no, I recorded it this morning when you asked for it, so you might okay. hear yourself on it. But, uh, so this was actually a quick vector field. Again, I have used Cinder quite a bit. Uh, I was working closely with MS Open Tech to get it onto that. But I wanted to show here, this was a couple hours. It's running off of Windows Store. Um, and the instructions, uh, if you being getting started on Cinder, you'll, you'll see the walkthrough we have up on Channel 9. But this was a vector field. It's something I had done previously in Silverlight and WPF. Uh, but some of those techniques uh, aren't supported in WinRT anymore, and going straight to DirectX and pixel shaders kind of is a deep step. So I wanted to, I've been meaning to do this as one of the demos that we do, and so your challenge was a great time to get it started. There are a lot of samples. When you download Cinder, if you go to the samples folder, mm -hmm. um, underscore DirectX, I made like nine samples there, and that's the best way to get started, probably going through those examples, because all of those run on Windows Store, shows kind of the nuances of working with DirectX, but those were while we were working with MS Tech, Open Tech, Dale Stamen and that group who did the massive work of bringing it over to Windows Store, which I'm so glad of, but I hadn't ever had time to play with it, so I finally there got to play go. with it last night instead of just working on it, so that was one of the first things I'm playing on, and I will, I want to eventually turn this into a, a Windows Store application. Great. Thank you very Thank much, you. Rick, and for your help. Andre, do we have on, not the one who was just here. Andre, come on down. Andre Pushkin, you did an end body simulation. And I believe this is our last one that I've got so far. Again, I've got email, I think, pending from one or two more of you. If you have projects you haven't sent yet, feel free to email me them, and I'll try to put them together and show them at the end of the day during my 10 favorite lines of code talk. And on this one, let's see if we've got the... Tell us a bit about what this is, uh, and so I'll try to bring up the video. A particle system, uh, it has two versions. One is just particles uh, working within attractors, and that runs well, well enough on an ARM-based tablet with about four to 6,000 particles. And uh, I also wanted to try to use C++ AMP and to compute the particles on GPU. They didn't work out so well on ARM, but actually on desktop it was able to do a full uh, end body simulation so every particle interacts with everyone else on uh, 25,000 particles. And I never worked with Cinder before. It made it really easy to visualize it and work like a charm. And it worked on a Windows 8 Store app, which is great because all of the frameworks I tried before for Windows 8 Store, they weren't easy to use or didn't work at all. 
Thank you. So now, remind me as I was putting that up. So you had used Cinder before, or you were just uh, getting no. started? I just what had you used before? Um, GDI. Okay, <laughs> very low level. <laughs> so you probably appreciated one, one of my litmus tests these days for is something high enough level to be usable by mortals is is loading a texture from a disk file one line. If the answer is more than one, not interested, let's, let's keep on looking for a solution. So, and your experience overall, would you recommend Cinder to C++ developers? Oh, absolutely. Excellent, well, thank you very much for that. Thank you for everybody who participated, and we will get a few more and share those with you. But the key thing, the key point is that C++ is not a difficult language. We think of it as difficult. We think of it the way it used to be. People are getting cool things done. You have, many of you, tried it out just overnight. And we are getting to a place where this ought to be available in the box to everybody. And we're working on that. And we'll keep you updated on that and many other exciting things happening in the C++ world.